Moving on to 9.5, we're going to talk about alternating series test, AST. So all the tests that we've uh, used so far have dealt with only positive terms in this section, and the following sections will have tests to determine the convergence of series with both positive and negative consecutive terms. So this needs to be, um, for instance, 1, negative 1 half, positive 1 fourth, negative 1 eighth, positive 1 sixteenth. So positive positive followed by negative negative would not fall under alternating series. Okay, it needs to be alternating signs on consecutive terms. Uh, the simplest such series is alternating series. Alternating series is a series whose term alternate um, alternate uh, consecutive signs. For example, consider the geometric series negative one half to the nth can be rewritten as negative one to the n times one half to the n. Now, the one half to the n is contributing to the magnitude of uh, this series, and this, however, this negative one to the n is only contributing to the sign. So we can call this the alternator. Um, this contributes to the sign change. And you can also, you may also see this represented as negative 1 to the n plus 1 or negative 1 to the n minus 1, depending on um, which term is to be positive first or um, whether we want the term to be negative, uh, positive, negative, positive, or uh, positive being the first term. So this series is an alternating geometric series with ratio of negative 1 half. Okay. So here's the alternating series test. First, let a sub n to be positive. Okay. The alternating series, um, negative 1 to the n of a times a sub n and negative 1 to the n plus 1 times a sub n will converge if the following two conditions are met. First, the limits of this rule of sequence as n approaches infinity must be equal to 0 and each subsequent term needs to be less than the previous term okay, uh, for all n values. Okay. Um, for an alternating series, the series must converge if its terms consistently shrink in size and approach 0. Um, and AS, uh, alternating series test does not show divergence if the conditions for the convergence are not met. This is only one way test for convergence. Um, the limit, if the limit as uh, n approaches infinity for a sub n does not equal to zero, then the series diverges, but it diverges by the nth term test, not by um, the uh, alternating series test. So let's look at the first example here determine whether the following series converge or diverge. So many times we can just ignore this um, alternating uh, series. We know it's alternating series, we simply have to test for this first condition. Usually the second condition will just fall into line. So we're not going to be concerned so much about the second condition. Um, uh, this will be for um, very specific cases that uh, we're not going to see much of. Uh, uh, really, it's just going to be this first condition that we have to be concerned about. Okay, because if the first condition passes, then the second will just naturally fall into line. But this is part of the rule, and we have to, uh, be, able to, pre um, to be able to present it um, um, uh, for, uh, for this lesson. Okay, so if we just look at this uh, a sub n, which is n over 2n minus 1, this diverges because it does not, by the nth term test, the limit is equal to 1 half, and therefore the first condition fails. And so the nth term test is the one that takes care of the fact that this series diverges. Uh, the second one here, n over natural log of 2n, this again, limit as n approaches infinity for this expression will go to 0, and by the nth term test, uh, does not equal to 0, um, because the numerator is growing at a faster rate than the denominator, it's actually going to infinity, therefore this series also diverge. So no need, um, uh, these have not passed, uh, uh, we have not had to use the alternating series test. Now the third one here, cosine of n pi over n. Now this is not something that will um, um, 
this is a, a special value, a special expression where the sign changes, right? We, we see this, we think of this as an oscillation, but this is not cosine of n, this is cosine of n pi. So if we test some of these values here, cosine of 1 pi, which is negative, if we plug in 2, we get cosine of 2 pi, which is positive. Cosine of 3 pi is negative 1. Cosine of 4 pi is positive 1. So actually, this is a disguise, a disguised alternating series. We can actually rewrite this as negative 1 to the n times 1 over n. Now, since the limit as n approaches infinity for 1 over n does equal to 0, then by the alternating series test, right, the series will converge. Now this is uh, strange for a couple of reasons. First, um, we have to be able to recognize that this is a disguise for alternating series. And the second thing that is strange is that we associate 1 over n as the harmonic series, right? And we know the harmonic series, even though the limit as n approaches infinity goes to 0, the harmonic series is divergent, right? So how come in the presence of an alternator, this divergent um, harmonic series suddenly becomes convergent. And the reason why is initially the, uh, the limit as n approaches infinity, um, even though the limit is going to zero, uh, the limit is not going to zero fast enough to allow for the series to converge. However, in the presence of an alternator, what happens is every other value is getting subtracted and that is uh, allowing um, for the series to converge. In the presence of an alternating, enough values are getting subtracted out to allow for this 1 over n to uh, converge in the series. Okay, so that's the reason there. All right, for d, um, negative 1 to the n minus 1, here's the alternator. We, have, we can look at the a sub n, which is 1 over n factorial. 1 over n factorial goes to 0. So um, it passes that first condition. So by um, the alternating series test, our series will converge. The next one here, limit as n approaches infinity for our a sub n is 1 over n minus 5 squared plus 1. We know this will go to 0, so therefore by the alternating series test, um, our series will converge as well. Uh, this again, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over times 1 over n. This is the same thing as c. Um, and we see that a sub n, in this case 1 over n, um, n approaches infinity, this expression goes to 0. So the sequence div uh, converges to 0. So therefore, by the alternating series test, this series will uh, converge. Okay. Okay. So a couple of, of uh, examples here. Uh, the limit as um, n approaches infinity for n plus 1 over n uh, is equal to 1 and uh, does not equal to 0, so this series will diverge by the nth term test. Uh, let's look at one more here. Here, if we look at the sequence, 2 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 half, 2 thirds, 1 third, 1 half, 1 fourth, now this is a uh, expression where the first condition will pass because the limit does eventually, over uh, a period of time, does eventually approach zero. However, along the way, the second condition is going to fail because um, each every subsequent term um, is not um, larger than the previous term. For instance, um, we see that uh, one half is less than one. However, two-thirds is greater than one-half, so there, there's not a, a consistent um, uh, decreasing of every value. And so therefore, this is, a, I guess, a special case where the second condition is going to fail. And because second condition fails for the um, alternating series test, the alternating series test does not apply even though the first condition passes. So this is pretty rare, uh, but this is just an example of when we would need this second uh, condition. Uh, to help us uh, catch these types of um, series that uh, would not um, would not be applied for alternating series test.